Egypt's Lost Queen Pharaohs, Their Stories Ancient Egypt has had numerous leaders come and go. Some of them were men and some of them were women. Women in ancient Egypt had more rights than anywhere else in the ancient world. Yet when you look at museums or history books, you usually see depictions of male pharaohs. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of Egypt's lost queen pharaohs, so let's begin. Merneith Before we get into some of the queens that you've probably already heard of, it's important to note that there were queens that ruled Egypt even before the likes of Hatshepsut and Cleopatra. One of the women who is sometimes believed to have been a ruler of Egypt is Merneith. Merneith was the consort of King Diet, the fourth pharaoh of the first Egyptian dynasty. After the death of King Diet, it's believed that Merneith may have taken over the kingdom as their son, Den, was too young to rule. While her rule is likely, whether she actually had an official title as a ruler or not is unconfirmed. Much like most of the other rulers from the first dynasty, what actually happened during her supposed rule is mostly unknown, but the biggest indications of her being a ruler comes from her grave. She was buried in a manner that was almost exclusively reserved for kings. Her tomb was placed next to her husband and her son, both of which ruled as kings, and was the exact same size and style as their tombs were. Aside from that, a seal was found on the tomb of her son King Den, which included the names of all of the kings from the first dynasty, and it included Merneith's name as well, the only woman on the seal. Sobekneferu Sobekneferu was the first woman from ancient Egypt who has some actual solid evidence to support the fact that she ruled as a pharaoh. She ascended to the throne after the death of Amenhemat IV, the previous pharaoh who was her husband, and possibly her brother. Her rule is evident by her inclusion in the Turin King List, an ancient papyrus that is considered the most extensive list of kings from ancient Egypt. She has also been mentioned in other ancient lists of kings, but has also been left out in others, with the other lists usually listing Sobekhotep I as the king that followed Amenhemhat IV. There have been some statues found that also support the claim that Sobekneferu was a pharaoh. A bust depicting her shows her wearing the royal attire that was generally reserved for kings. She adopted full royal titles, something no women prior to her had ever done, including Merneith. Her reign is said to have lasted around three years and ten months, and she is also said to have had a royal pyramid built in her honor known as the Northern Mazguna Pyramid. The Northern Mazguna Pyramid was actually rediscovered in ruins in 1910. However, no signs of her burial were ever found. However, outside of the lists and the pyramid, very little evidence of her rule exists. While most historians won't actually confirm that she was a real pharaoh, it's clear that she was possibly the most influential woman of her time, and the most powerful woman in Egyptian history until Hatshepsut came into power. It's extremely likely that she didn't assume the full powers that were normally associated with a pharaoh. Thus, many discredit her tenure as an actual ruler of Egypt. Hatshepsut While all of the female rulers or pharaohs that came before this point have some sort of dispute around the legitimacy of their rule, this is the one example where there was no dispute at all. Hatshepsut was the daughter of Thutmose the I, the third pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt, and she was his only child from his principal wife, Amos. All of Thutmose's the first other children came from secondary wives. Early in her life, Hatshepsut became the principal wife of her older half-brother Thutmose II to help him become pharaoh. She acted as his regent and is considered to have wielded a lot more influence over Egypt overall than the actual pharaoh himself. Thutmose II had a son, Thutmose III, with a secondary wife, and that son became the rightful heir to the throne. When Thutmose III was only three years old, his father died and Hatshepsut took upon all the responsibilities of a pharaoh while her stepson remained the official pharaoh. By the time Thutmose III was eight years old, Hatshepsut took the throne herself and became the co-ruler of Egypt with her stepson, although clearly the only person with power here was Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut officially became the second ever confirmed female pharaoh in the history of Egypt. Her reign as pharaoh lasted about 22 years, during which she pursued trade expeditions that made Egypt richer than at any other point in history. She built some amazing monuments to cement her legacy, including two 100-foot-tall obelisks in Karnak, one of which still stands to this day, the Great Temple of Hatshepsut in Deir al-Bakri, and what's even more unusual is that Hatshepsut was mainly depicted in ancient Egyptian art in the style of a man. 
Artisans would refrain from giving her feminine features, although she made sure there were references that confirmed that she was, in fact, a woman. To this day, Hatshepsut is considered one of the most powerful women in history, and one of Egypt's greatest and most iconic leaders, regardless of gender. Nefertiti Akhenaten was the 10th ruler of the 18th Egyptian dynasty. He was unlike any king that Egypt had ever seen before, as he brought about what was probably the greatest change in Egyptian culture yet. She reformed the Egyptian religion and abandoned polytheism in favor of monotheism, with Aten being the central god. While the concept wasn't really popular among the Egyptian public, it did have full support of his wife Nefertiti. Nefertiti is said to have been equally important and as powerful as her husband Akhenaten, and during their rule, Egypt is said to have been at the height of its wealth and prosperity. Shortly after the death of Akhenaten, an unknown female ruler took his place as pharaoh, known as Nefer Neferuaten. While it was never actually disclosed who Nefer Neferuaten was, the general historical consensus is that it was actually Nefertiti. Aside from being Akhenaten's queen and her own alleged rule, Nefertiti is perhaps best known for her bust. Nefertiti's bust is probably one of the most famous pieces of Egyptian art. Made in the most photorealistic detail imaginable for the time, when it was discovered in 1912, it became almost instantly iconic. The Nefertiti bust is now on display at the Neues Museum in Berlin and is considered one of Germany's most famous museum attractions. There have been numerous attempts by the Egyptian government to bring the bust back to Egypt, although they haven't been fruitful for Egypt. Cleopatra Calling Cleopatra a lost pharaoh would be a bit misleading, we admit, but there can't be a video on ancient Egypt's female pharaohs without at least mentioning the most notable one of all. Cleopatra actually was an Egyptian. She was from the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was a Greco-Macedonian family that took over Egypt after Alexander the Great had conquered the last shortly before his death. Nonetheless, the Ptolemaic dynasty had hesitantly adopted the customs and culture of the land they now ruled over and its last ruler was none other than Cleopatra. After the death of her father Ptolemy XII Aletes in 51 BC, Cleopatra ascended to the throne of the pharaoh. It's unclear whether she was the sole ruler of Egypt during this time, or whether she co-ruled Egypt with her infant brother-slash-husband Ptolemy XIII Theos Philopator. But Cleopatra went above and beyond to please her Egyptian subjects, far beyond any of her predecessors had gone before. She even learned the Egyptian language, becoming the first Ptolemaic leader to do so. To say that Cleopatra faced hardships during her rule is an understatement. She was exiled, had to form important alliances to regain her throne, had to face attacks on her throne and her empire, and had to lose almost everything close to her. She managed to influence the most powerful man on earth, Julius Caesar, and even had an alleged son with him. She later formed a romantic link with another powerful Roman general, Mark Antony, in a love story that has been told time and time again. She was powerful, intelligent, knew how to play the cards right given the status of women in those times, which is how she cemented herself as one of Egypt's most iconic leaders, albeit not the most stable one. Her rule was cut short by the forces of Octavian who killed Mark Antony, who she had married by then, and took Cleopatra as a prisoner. She is said to have committed suicide while imprisoned, and the location of her tomb remains a mystery to this day. And that's a wrap for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you next time.